In this video, what I want to talk about is homothetic preferences. All the utility functions that we've talked about so far, the Cobb Douglas, the perfect substitutes, and the perfect complements are all what we call homothetic. And what this means is that the marginal rate of substitution, the marginal rate of substitution only depends on the ratio of the quantity of goods. No matter what the total amount of goods is, the marginal rate of substitution should be the same as long as the ratio of goods 1 and good 2 are also the same. So we will be actually demonstrating how to show that the Cobb-Douglas, the perfect substitutes and the perfect complements are all homothetic. So we'll go for the Cobb-Douglas first. So the, the typical Cobb-Douglas utility function is equal to is equal to a x sub 1 raised to alpha times x sub 2 raised to beta. And when we try to look for our marginal utility and plug it into or substitute it into our marginal rate of substitution, what we find is MRS 1, 2 is actually equal to alpha A x sub 1 raised to alpha minus 1 x sub 2, this is minus, raised to B or beta over beta a x sub 1 raised to alpha x sub 2 raised to beta minus 1. And so when we simplify this, you can actually cancel out a, both a's gets cancelled out, alpha gets cancelled out, this x sub 1 on the denominator gets cancelled out, the beta on the exponent of x sub 2 gets cancelled out, and so x sub 2 on the numerator gets cancelled out, and we are left with alpha times x sub 2 over beta times x sub 1. And we can see that the marginal rate of substitution is actually just dependent on x sub 1, or the ratio of x sub 1 and x sub 2, because alpha and beta are actually just constants. In the case of perfect substitutes, on the other hand, in the case of perfect substitutes, this is the second, our utility function, x sub 1, x sub 2, is just equal to a x sub 1, comma, uh, plus, plus, not comma, plus b x sub 2. And so when we get the marginal rate of substitution, again, the definition itself for perfect substitutes is that the marginal substitution for the two goods should be a constant. So if the marginal rate of substitution is constant, then it would just depend on the ratio of the two goods and not really the total goods. So again, this uh, for the case in the case of um, perfect substitutes, the marginal rate of substitution is dependent on the ratio. And so this is also a homothetic uh, function, homothetic utility function. And in the third case, we have our perfect complements. So again, u is a function of x sub 1 and x sub 2. And this would be equal to the minimum of a x sub 1 comma b x sub 2. And in this case, I think it's easier to approach this graphically. So I'll just draw our um, indifference map here and draw our utility or indifference curve for perfect complements. And so what we see is that when the consumer consumes at this point, let's label this A, when the consumer consumes at point A, the marginal rate of substitution is actually undefined. When the consumer consumes at point B, above point A, the marginal rate of substitution is actually equal to negative infinity. Again, as a reminder, the marginal rate of substitution is equal to the negative of the slope of the indifference curve. And so what we can see here is that the slope at this point, the slope at this point is almost a vertical line, which means that there is no change in x or zero change in x. So change in y over zero 
would be equal to infinity, but we know that the marginal uh, the slope of the indifference curve is actually downward sloping. So this should be negative infinity. And so marginal rate of substitution being equal to negative of negative infinity would be equal to positive infinity. And so the marginal rate of substitution at this point above A is actually equal to infinity. On the other hand, if the consumer consumes at point C here, the marginal rate of substitution is equal to zero because there is no change in Y. So change in Y over change in X, and in this case, change in Y is equal to zero over change in X, and this would automatically result in zero. So in the case of perfect complements, the marginal rate of substitution can take three values. The first value is that it is undefined. Undefined. The second value is that it's infinity. And the third value is zero. There are, however, cases where the marginal rate of substitution is only dependent on one good. And a good example of that is the quasi-linear utility function. Quasi-linear utility function utility function and a good example of that is that u is a function of x sub 1 and x sub 2 is equal to ln x sub 1 plus x sub 2 and when we try to get the marginal utility uh, or the marginal rate of substitution so mrs 1 2 this would be equal to mu1 over mu2 and mu1 is actually 1 over x, and this is divided by 1 because uh, derivative of, of partial derivative of u with respect to x sub 2 is just equal to 1. So your marginal rate of substitution is equal to 1 over x sub 1. And you see, we see that the marginal rate of substitution is dependent only on x sub 1 in this case. For the uh, function or the preference to be homothetic, it has to follow that the marginal rate of substitution depends on both goods and not only one good. And so quasi-linear utility functions are actually not homothetic.